morning. Let's pray. God, we just thank you so much for allowing us to come together to, to worship and to praise who you are and, and what you do for us, to us and through us. And God, I just pray that you would soften our hearts today, open our minds to the truth that's found in your word. And God, I just ask that you speak to me and through me, allow nothing of myself to remain. But God, just your words are the things that last forever. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. These are new batteries, so the problem's up there. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> it's not on. All right. Um, yeah, no? No. I'm dead? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, well, we'll improvise. All right. So, last week, can you guys hear me if I just talk loud? Yeah. All right, that's awesome. Of course. Do that. Huh? I said, of course. Of course. Aren't you privileged? <laughs> All right. So last week we started a, a little series called Four Little Things on the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 24 through 28. And Pastor Jeff started the series talking about the ant and how the ant is, is very diligent in its preparation in life and how it's good for us to be prepared in those things, to prepare, in, to prepare ourselves in the summer when everything is going good in life. So that when the bad things come, we're a little bit better prepared to endure and get through. And to prepare for the harvest. When things just are so abundant that we're able to just take in things. And be able to acknowledge God's blessings and to be a part of it. Verse, uh, chapter Proverbs 30, verse 24 through 28 says, There are four things on the earth that are small but unusually wise. Ants, they are strong. But they store up food all summer. Hyraxes, they aren't powerful, but they make their homes among the rocks. Locusts, they have no king, but they march in formation. Lizards, they are easy to catch, but they are found even in king's palaces. So today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about hyrax. And if you're anything like me, you kind of have really no idea what a hyrax is. <laughs> right? So I, I had to do some investigating. I wanted to actually know what I was talking about. So I found some pictures of a hyrax and their community. What's really interesting about these creatures is that most of them live in a large community. They live in, in, in communities of 50 to 80, and inside those communities there's smaller family units. And what, what's really, you, think, you look at them and you think, oh, they're so small, cute, and cuddly, and they're great, and, and they're probably related to like a, a rabbit or something like that. But, that's not even close. Their closest living relative is the elephant and the, and the sea man. Believe it or not. DNA-wise, those are their closest living relatives. What's really great is you can see how they're all bunched up and everything like that. They have very bad um, body heat things. <laughs> and so they really can't regulate their body heat too well, so they rely on each other for that heat and for that comfort. And they also rely on, if you look at the next picture, they kind of gather up in little groups. And what's really interesting, when they eat, they'll go down, grab the food, whether it's a leaf or something off a bush or a tree, and then they'll bring their head up and eat, and they'll continue to watch out among the others to make sure nothing's going on. And they'll, they'll get in circles back to back and watch around them. They look out for each other. And you'll see that in these two pictures, there's one with their mouth open. And there's no food in there. What he's doing is he's calling out to the other ones to let them know there's danger in the area and to be on guard. And then next you have this guy. If you look really closely, he kind of looks like he's smiling, right? He's, he's very, very content just to be in his rock. He's kind of just coming out and saying, what's going on? What's all the ruckus? I'm all right. Everybody's good? All right. He doesn't look like he has too much of a care in the world. It's just a cute little smiley self coming out to see what's going on. Now that we all kind of have a, a better understanding of what a hyrax looks like, kind of a little bit of information about what a hyrax is. What do you think? 
think it might be that God wants us to learn from them. Proverbs 30, verse 26 says, Hyraxes, they aren't powerful, but they make their homes among the rocks. You know, I think in Scripture there's a, there's a lot of verses like this one where God hopes that we would go deeper into our understanding of what it truly means and what's truly going on in it. And if you just read that verse, you might think, okay, hyraxes are weak and they live in rocks. Big deal. But there's so much more that we can learn from them than just that. And I want to touch on just three little lessons that we can learn from the hyrax. The first thing we can learn from the hyrax is our need for community. <coughs> Another thing we can learn is who we listen to matters. And the last thing I'm going to touch on later is where to go for protection and rest. Next to our basic needs of food, water, and shelter, these three lessons are crucial to our survival. Without an understanding of these lessons, our lives can pretty easily spin out of control. In the hierarchies, their need for community, they've learned to rely on each other for survival. They work together to regulate body heat. They work together when it's time to eat. When it's time to go out, they work together. They realize that they're all in this thing together. We're all in this thing together. So they look out for each other. They kind of have this Hebrews 10 <clears throat> mentality. In Hebrews 10, verse 24 through 25, it says, Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another. This verse is talking about being involved in a community. And not just being involved in a community, but the benefits of being involved in that community. So often we try to do life on our own. We don't want to share too much of what's going on because of what other people might think of what we're going through and how we're dealing with it. And a lot of us say, well, I like to be alone. I like to not be bothered. But we all yearn to be in community. There's a show on the History Channel called Alone. And it's been on for two seasons now. The third season is actually in taping now. And what they do is they take ten survivalists of different aspects of, of talent. And they take them, the first two seasons they took them to Vancouver Island, which is northwest of the United States off the coast of Washington and Canada area. And it's the most interesting place when it comes to weather, climate, and uh, location because of the rocks and the forest and the overabundance of bears and wild animals. And they go out there with no crews, no camera crews, no film crews, no sound editors, no nothing. It's just the person. And they give that person a camera, a couple cameras, and some survival gear. And they're, they're asked to stay out there as long as they can. And the one who stays out there the longest gets $500,000. And it's a really interesting show to see how they go through everything. How they figure out where to get food from, how they go about doing that, how they go about developing shelter and, and, and living and feeding themselves, and how much food they actually need to survive, eating mice and trees and bark and leaves and whatever kind of animal they can catch for protein. Every single one of them, over the last two seasons, 
has said, you know, the hardest part is not finding food. It's not the terrain. It's not figuring out shelter. It's not even the animals that I have to deal with. The hardest part of that whole deal is being alone. Community is so important. In community, you find encouragement. You find motivation. You find love. And, and guess what? Others find that in you. As you remain in community with other people. Your involvement in community not only benefits you, but it, it benefits others as well. Physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And here's the kicker. That has always been God's ideal for the church. He wants the members of the church to stay connected in community. Because it's not always, or ever, just about you. Your being here is motivation for others. Your being here is encouragement for others. And that being here is the same to you. Hyrax also teaches us the importance of knowing who to listen to. A Hyrax has 21 different vocalizations that they can do. And they do that to communicate with other Hyraxes. And what's really interesting, the other Hyraxes know what each one of those 21 sounds mean. As I pointed out earlier in, in that group of hyraxes that were sitting back to back, that one calling out would be called the sentry. He's the guard. He's the main guy who's going to be keeping lookout for everybody else. And when he sounds the warning, they know who to listen to. In the midst of all the world's chatter, in the midst of all the things the earth and world and people throw at us. The Hyrax understands that they can't do it on their own. They can't figure it all out. They need others in their lives who are willing to speak into their lives so that they can listen to them. Do you have people in your life that are willing to speak into your life in a positive way. To give you that encouragement and that motivation and that love we talked about a little bit ago. Stephen Covey says, most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. How true is that? We're in conversation or we're even, God forbid, in an argument. Nine times out of ten, if not ten times out of ten, we're thinking about how we're going to reply and not trying to understand why they might be saying that. Understanding the why behind what people say is life-giving and life-saving. I've been in youth ministry for a long time, for approximately 12 years. And I've seen what can happen when students listen to the wrong voices. I've sat up with suicidal students. I've sat up with students who have threatened to bring, bring a weapon to school. I've dealt with bullying students. I've dealt with parents and students that, who have unexpectedly had to endure a teen pregnancy. There's a lot that can happen when we listen to the wrong voice. And it's amazing how desperate life can become when we listen to the wrong voice. But it's also pretty amazing how hopeful life can be when we listen to the right voice. In my years in youth ministry, I've also seen signs of hope in students. I've seen students who have given their lives to Christ. I've seen students who have developed a servant's heart 
and started to become more mission-minded and serving other people. I've seen students surrender to ministry. I've seen students become leaders and encourage and motivate other people. I've seen students overcome depression and actually start loving themselves because they're listening to the right voices in their lives. Listening to the right voice can give you a, a new vigor for life, and it can also save someone from despair and confusion. We were at camp last month, pretty much a month to this week, and for some unknown reason, at about 2 o'clock in the morning, I forget which day it was, Tuesday or Wednesday, I want to say, and uh, in the boys' dorm, only the boys' dorm for some reason, probably because it was the boys' dorm, at 2 o'clock in the morning, the fire alarm goes off. Now, it woke me up, thankfully. And being the leader, I had to make sure the boys heard it. So I go and wake up everybody. There was one boy who didn't want to get out of bed. He was hearing the alarm. He was like, turn it off. And I had to literally pull him out of bed and say, come on, it's a fire alarm. I don't know what's going on. Let's go. You don't know. You don't have time to grab shoes. No, you're not getting dressed. Let's go. We need people in our lives who are willing to speak and who are willing to get involved when the alarms of life are going off. And we need to be able and willing to listen to what they have to say. Because I'll guarantee it, it's not something that they want to hurt you with. It's something they want to encourage you with and motivate you with. When the higher acts hear the sentry sound the alarm because of danger, they learn to listen. And what's really cool about the higher acts, when they hear this alarm go off, they scatter and they run to the rock. They run to their homes. They learn to listen and they, they find their protection and their rest in the rocks. Psalm 104 verse 18 says, the rocks form a refuge for the high rocks. They've learned that the rocks are the safest place for them to be because they've experienced the strength of the rock. They've seen how powerless their enemies are against the rock and how protected they are within the rock. We need to have that kind of confidence in our rock, in Jesus Christ. When trouble appears, we need to know that with Jesus is the safest place we can be. A lot of times when when things get rough and things get confusing or things just get out of control. We don't generally rest in that confidence that with Jesus is where we need to be. The first thing we want to do is talk to somebody about it. Someone that's going to agree with us. Someone that's going to feed into our hurt. But the Hyrax is no... It's best to go to the rock, because that's where you'll be secure, that's where you'll be safe, and that's where you'll find rest. And with that being said, the rocks are so much more than a high rack than just a safe place from danger. Proverbs 30, 26 says the high racks make their homes in the rock. Now home granted it is, is a place where we feel safe and a place where we feel protection. Almost like on cue. <laughs> but it's also where we find encouragement. And it's also where we find our closest community. Sir Edward 
Coke said, the home to everyone is to him this castle and fortress, as well for his defense against injury and violence, as for his rest. Our own, Jesus Christ, our refuge, our protector, doesn't just want to keep us safe. He doesn't just want us to go through an easy life. He wants to give us rest. And he wants to have us grow in community with, with him so that we can learn to listen to his voice. So that we can learn to understand and hear his voice. The Hyrax believe in the rock's strength and safety so much they built their lives on that confidence. And they've made the rocks their dwelling place. They've made the rocks their home. We can safely find, we can find safety in our rock. We can find safety in Jesus when we take up our residence in Jesus. Life is going to continue to be crazy, hectic. But we can have that safety if we truly take and make our home in Christ. King David says in Psalm 62, 7, he says, My victory and honor come from God alone. He is my refuge, a rock where no enemy can reach me. Acts 17, 28 says, For in him we live and move and exist. Knowing that to be true, where else could we truly find ourselves than in the one who created us? Our lives rest in our connection to God. Where else would we go to get what we need in life? Truth be told, we have enemies all around us. The world isn't a safe and friendly place. And that makes life tough. We can't afford to hide. And God doesn't expect us to go through life paranoid of every day either. God created you to live an adventurous life full of meaning. And I believe if we take what we can learn from the Hyrax, our, our need for community, understanding who we listen to in our lives really matters to our life living. And that we can find safety in the rock because well, we've taken up our residence in Christ. If we can learn those little bits of wisdom, You will experience a life unimaginable because you will be in such commun close community with God and that He will be the one you start to listen to as He speaks into your life. And that will all be done because you found safety and residence in who He is and what He's done. God, we just thank you so much for this community that you've given us, this church, these people. And God, I pray that we would, each Sunday morning, we wouldn't come to see if the music is what we like or to see if um, someone likes our new outfit. But God, that we would come to be motivated and encouraged by each other. And God, that others would find that in us. And God, that we would learn to to hear your voice as you speak into our lives. And God, that we would be so much more than just people taking up space. But God, we would be your hands and feet in this world. And God, I pray that we would learn to take up our residence, take up our home and who you are and what you did. Find that God, that we would be encouraged and loved by you. God, these, these verses may seem small, we may just glance over them. But God, I pray that we dig down deep. 
and see what you truly have to say to us so that our hearts can be open and receptive to who you are and our lives can be eternally changed.